Canada, often depicted as a land of politeness and maple syrup, possesses a clandestine force that operates in the shadows, safeguarding national interests with silent resolve. Joint Task Force 2 stands as the nation's premier special operations force, a shield against terrorism threats both at home and abroad. In this video we'll be talking about Joint Task Force 2 and why we say it is Canada's version of SEAL Team 6. Let's get started. In the early 1990s, there was a need for a special team to handle tough situations in Canada. This led to the idea of forming JTF2. The government wanted a group that could deal with serious problems like terrorism. They decided to create a military team instead of using police officers. This was because there were more soldiers available for the job. The decision to form JTF2 came after discussions about the role of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police's Special Emergency Response Team CERT. Some people felt that the police team was too focused on using guns and violence. They thought a military team might be better suited for the job. So Deputy Minister of Defense Robert Fowler suggested creating a new force. This force would be trained to handle dangerous situations without relying heavily on lethal force. In 1993, JTF2 became a reality. It started with just over 100 members. Most of them came from other military units like the Canadian Airborne Regiment and Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. They were chosen because they had the skills needed for this kind of work. JTF2 got its own base in Ottawa, where they could train and plan their operations. The base was once used by another special team called CERT. It was located on Dwyer Hill Road near Ottawa. JTF2 took over this facility and made it their own. They even had some unique training tools there, like a Greyhound bus and a DC-9 aircraft. These were used to simulate real-life situations and prepare for missions. JTF-2's creation was a response to the need for a specialized force to deal with high-risk situations. Their main focus was on counterterrorism and handling dangerous missions. Unlike regular military units, JTF-2 was trained to work quietly and quickly, without drawing too much attention. This secrecy was essential for their success in carrying out their missions effectively. Moving on to their operations. JTF-2's main job is counterterrorism. They're trained to stop terrorist attacks before they happen. They also rescue hostages in dangerous situations like when people are held captive by bad guys. This requires careful planning and quick action. When there's a crisis at sea, JTF-2 steps in. They handle maritime operations like stopping pirates or rescuing people from ships. These missions are challenging because they happen on the open ocean, far from land. Sometimes important people need protection. That's where JTF-2 special protection skills come in. They guard VIPs, very important persons, and keep them safe from harm. This could be politicians, diplomats, or other important figures. JTF-2 also does special reconnaissance. This means they gather secret information about enemy targets. They sneak into enemy territory to find out what's going on and report back to their leaders. It's like being a spy, but with a bigger mission. In Bosnia, JTF-2 hunted down snipers who were attacking UN soldiers. They used their skills to track down these dangerous enemies and keep the peace. They were also ready to rescue hostages, but luckily the prisoners were released before they had to act. During the OK crisis, JTF-2 was set to protect highways and water plants. They were ready to help the police crack down on smuggling. However, the mission was canceled after it was revealed to the public. This shows how important secrecy is to their work. Lastly, the unit's accountability. Even though Joint Task Force 2 JTF-2 operates in secret, they still have rules to follow and are held accountable for their actions. This means they must answer for any mistakes or wrongdoing, just like anyone else. One example of this is when a request was made to have a court-martial for one of the JTF-2 officers. A court-martial is like a trial, but for military personnel. The officer was accused of mistreating a fellow team member. However, the court decided not to proceed with the trial because the accused officer was not named. This shows that JTF-2 members are not above the law and can face consequences for their actions. Sadly, tragedy can also strike in the line of duty. Master Corporal Anthony Klumpenhauer, a member of JTF-2, lost his life while on a mission in Afghanistan. He fell from a communications tower and later investigation revealed he was knocked unconscious by an electrical surge. This incident reminds us of the risks involved in JTF-2's operations. It's important to remember that even though much of JTF-2's work is hidden from public view, they are still accountable for their actions. 
This ensures that they operate with integrity and professionalism, even in the most challenging situations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to check out this one about how SEAL Team 6 took out Osama bin Laden.